steady beat is crucial for reading fluency. In fact, uh, neuroscientists, including uh, Dr. Nina Kraus out of Northwestern, have concluded that the part of the brain where there's reading fluency is also where we have steady beat. It's totally connected. I love using instruments that we can recycle, like bags and water bottles. And I love the maracas too. Uh, students have been able to participate and interact in the music class, and they've enjoyed the connection that there is with, uh, with reading and literacy. It also has made some fun math connections. The kids really look forward to coming and I hear them discussing and we talk about the things that we've done in class here in the classroom and they bring it up on their own as well and notice them talking to classmates about it. So it's been a very fun program for them. They learn how to read notes, they learn patterns, they learn things that they could actually take to the classroom and use as well. He, he played us the, the flute and he did fun activities. We also played music with other instruments. I have a few lower readers that I notice um, that their fluency has shown some improvement because I remind them, you know, when we're reading, we're trying to keep kind of a steady beat going. What I like about music is that I like when Miss Beth touches the piano and she let us touch her instruments. They are more confident in overall the work they produce. Um, they're more confident in speaking in front of each other or in front of the classroom. The different words that are learning in this class are crescendo, de crescendo, forte, piano, legato, and staccato. Youth Policy Institute received the um, Promise Neighborhood Grant. Um, which was um, granted to us by um, well, is to the Department of Education and signed up by um, President Barack Obama. As a result of doing work in the arts, that some kids who may not be very strong academically or have a lot of friends, or you know, a little awkward socially, or aren't strong athletically, maybe are really good in the arts. And then their peers see them in a different way, in a better way, and their confidence builds, and hopefully that starts to spread to other areas of their lives. The things that she talks about, inclusion and not bullying and not excluding people, it's good to hear that over and over again for them to understand that's how we behave when we want to behave nicely. They had to work together and they had to come up with ways on creating uh, something, so it definitely has helped them with group work. She'll say like write a note for this particular sound, they're able to do it, or with the cups make a combination of sounds and they did pretty complicated ones and I was kind of surprised that they were able to do that. So she plays the piano with me sad when she does like sad music. I've even had um, a second grade teacher um, come into the class one day and um, she, she noticed that one of our challenging classes was paying attention and was focused and she said, wow, for that class to be so engaged and to be focused, this teacher must be amazing. How can I get her? How can I have her? come and teach my students. My biggest goal is for them to be exposed to different kinds of music and to understand that music can change our mood. Well, I did like school before, but now I, I, like, I like the school even more. It made me feel happy and excited. I was so shocked at how really into it the kids were. You know, when Miss Beth is playing the, the piano or doing something, sometimes they'll look back at me like, Wow, this is amazing. You know, this is a rarity because we don't have the funding in our classrooms to provide musical instruction and arts, and this is a great opportunity for the kids. It is so gratifying to be able to bring music to these kids who might never have the experience of being with, a, with an active performing artist, um, and to share what I love so much with them.